protein deficiency, why is it important? Let's first talk about why protein is important. So just some basic biochemistry here, um, and we won't get too deep into it, but what is protein? So protein are these structures that the body produces as a result of combining amino acids. So amino acids, think of these as building blocks to protein. And there are about 20 different amino acids. 10 of them are essential, uh, essential amino acids, and uh, meaning that we have to eat these 10 essential amino acids in our diet. And if we have these 10 in adequate quantities, our body can make the other 10 amino acids through biochemistry. Protein forms, or amino acids um, form helixes, um, and then these helixes go on to form greater polypeptide chains or structures, and then these structures go on to form what's called a protein. So there's kind of an ascension of what happens from the building block of the amino acid all the way through to the production of a protein. Now, there are thousands and thousands of different proteins that the body produces. I'm gonna give you a few examples of some proteins that you might not even realize. One of them is a protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein inside your red blood cells and it carries oxygen. So it's a very important protein and this is actually a loss or a lack of proper hemoglobin leads to anemia which can cause a reduction in oxygen delivery to your tissues which makes you tired and brain foggy and slow to heal. So this is again hemoglobin is a protein right, derived, basically derived from amino acids and other nutrients to, to carry oxygen. So that's just one common example. Many of you have, have, you know, probably heard of some of these other connections that protein forms your muscles and tendons. So if you don't get adequate protein, this is why this is so critical and important, then if you try to work out or exercise, Oftentimes what we'll see happen is you will actually injure, injure yourself and, and end up basically not exercising, right? So it's kind of a, think of it as a cycle, really. Um, if you exercise, especially those of you that are older, and we'll get more into this in just a minute, but if you're trying to exercise and you're trying to do weight resistance or weight bearing activity and you're not getting adequate protein, you'll actually injure yourself in essence the the lack of protein as because it's a required for healing and repair of that exercise um, will lead to an injury that can knock you out of the ability to exercise altogether this is where we actually see a lot of people as they get older they think hey i'm just getting older and so um it's not really a lack of protein per se it's just my age and nothing could be further from the truth now one of the myths about protein, we hear this a lot, is that too much protein causes kidney damage. This is a very big myth. There's no direct evidence that shows this to be the case. Now, that being said, there are some people when they reduce their protein, we'll see improvements in kidney function, but that's not the rule, that's really more the exception. And so if you're worried, if your doctor's told you eating too much protein causes kidney damage, he's generalizing and probably to your own detriment because what happens to a lot of people is, is they reduce their protein. We saw this uh, really specifically in the 80s and 90s. They increase their carbs to make up for the calories. And so what does that do? This, this combination of lowered protein because lowered protein also comes with reduced fat because a lot of your fat comes with protein, especially if you're eating animal foods. Um, but carbohydrates, this increases blood sugar, right? And it increases the risk of, aside from that, it increases the risk of inflammation, depending on the type of carb that you're eating. Now, some would argue um, that not all carbs are, are created equally, and I agree with that, but when most people switch to this type of low protein, high carbohydrate diet, regardless of the quality of carbohydrate, if your protein needs aren't being met, your muscles, your tendons won't repair and they'll actually, your body will start to auto-catabolize. 
So it will start to catabolize, that means break down. If we put an auto in front of that, it means your body, you self breaking down, you're auto catabolizing your muscle to get to protein. You're getting that protein out of your muscle. Remember, what is your muscle? Muscle and bone both. So really it's, it's between these two. Muscle and bone are storage. And, and obviously muscle has a purpose to move you and to, and to help you function, but they're also storage sites for ex extra protein. And this is why muscle will grow and bone can become more dense. If you have adequate protein and you're exercising, you can pack more density into these tissues. And then if you have extra, right, if something happens like illness, like a cold or a massive flu where you're running high fevers and you're in bed for a week, you know, your body has protein, extra protein stored in these muscles. Because Why is that important? Because this protein, we ran out of room here, this protein is important for immune function. So how does your immune system function if it doesn't have adequate protein? Your antibodies are made from protein. Your body's ability to make weapons against bad guys, right? But not only that, there's, there's also albumin, which is an important protein uh, constituent in the bloodstream. So antibodies, albumin, protein is important for your immune system to be able to do its job. If you're already getting a low protein, high carbohydrate diet, you're exercise intolerant, your immune system is going to follow that and then you're going to be a mess. So it's very, very important to understand that muscle requires protein for repair but also muscle is a reserve tank for protein. Your bone requires protein. I'm sure you've all heard of collagen. So the bone is a collagen matrix. Most of your bone is not calcium. This is another kind of nutritional myth. People think, oh, if I just take more calcium, my bone density will increase. And that's not true. Collagen is protein and it is the backbone or the matrix if you will of your bone and so you have this matrix where minerals deposit into this protein matrix called collagen and so most of your bone is actually protein not mineral mineral mineralization occurs to the collagen to make it flexible and strong uh, because be, because your bone needs to be flexible and strong but Collagen is the vast majority of your bony tissue. We also have the importance of protein in our organs. Our organs require protein. Now, some of our organs require protein for structure, so just their, their shape and structure. But we also have to understand that our organs produce hormones. And hormones and neurochemicals. And these structures, if you will, are proteins. You can't make testosterone and estrogen or progesterone without protein. You can't make serotonin and dopamine and adrenaline without protein. So protein is required to produce your hormones and your neurochemicals. Protein is also required for the structure of your organs. Protein is also required to produce digestive enzymes. So when your gut produces those enzymes, right, to help you break your food down, these are proteins in essence. And so not getting adequate protein is going to affect your digestion. It's a catch-22 because many people, um, they, they, they reduce their caloric intake in, a, in an effort to try to lose weight. And in fact, if they reduce their protein intake to an inadequate level, they won't be able to digest the nutrition from the carbs that they're eating and they'll become even more accelerated in their malnourishment. So protein, very, very important. We also know that skin, but the same here. So collagen, also important for skin. So for if, you know, if, if I haven't convinced you enough yet already that protein is super important, let me, let, me, um, let me lean in on vanity for just a minute. Your skin, your skin's ability to have elasticity, to, to let wrinkle less is largely dependent upon the collagen matrix within the skin, within the subdermal layers of the skin. And so lack of protein and lack of a particular type of protein called collagen will make you age faster, will make you look older, will make your skin wrinkle prematurely. Nobody wants that. 
So make sure you're getting your adequate protein. So these are some of the primary functions of protein. Again, there's a lot of functions here, your muscle tissue, your immune function, your bone structure, your organs and what they produce in terms of chemicals, and then your skin in terms of structure and beauty. So protein, can't live without it, don't make the attempt. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.